Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Right here I have the Anker Solix F3800, and this has been a very popular power station this year, and for good reason. It's always priced well against the competition. It has a large inverter. It puts out split-face power good for up to 6,000 watts, and it has a large lithium iron phosphate battery at almost 4,000 watt hours of capacity. However, in my original review, I found one big quirk about this. Whenever you AC charge this power station, it shuts off the 240 volt output. The split phase output cannot be used. Now I thought it'd be helpful to demonstrate what the actual problem is and why it's important to solve. So right here I have the F3800 with the split phase output, the 240 volts, feeding my transfer switch. Now a lot of people also do this with a generator inlet to backfeed to their main panel with an interlock switch. So these are the two most common ways to power your home during a power outage. Well, the 240 volt output needs to be enabled in order to do that. Well, let's say there's a big storm going on, uh, I don't have any solar available, or maybe it's at night and I can't charge with solar input. You need to charge with AC input. So let's say I have a gas generator and I wanna charge this. So I have the gas generator feed right here. Let's plug it in. I'll show you what happens. Shuts off the 240. Well, this right here solves that problem. So what is this thing? Well, this is the EG4 charge verter. This is a massive AC to DC power supply, meaning that you connect 120 volts AC or 240 volts AC input here, and then on the other side, it puts out DC power. For example, on this side, you have your main positive and negative DC outputs, so you can connect into the solar charging ports. So by using the EG4 charge verter, we can basically trick the power station to think it's charging from DC input. This will allow us to keep the 240 volt split phase output enabled while you're charging from AC power. Now guys, this is not a sponsored video because I didn't even know if this was going to work when I originally purchased the EG4 charge verter, but guess what? It does work. Now this comes with the cabling required to have a 240 volt input and to connect directly up to a 48 volt battery. So there will be a few modifications to this wiring to get it to charge off 120 volts and to connect up to the Anker F3800. But I'll walk you through that here in a couple minutes. But first, let's hook it up and show you how it works. So for my first test, what I have is the EG4 connected to a 120 volt AC source and I have the Anker F3800 running about a 780 watt load through the inverter. So I have the charging cable for the DC solar input. I'm gonna connect the charge verter up to it right now. So now that it's connected, you just give it a couple seconds and you'll start seeing a charging input right here on the screen. So now we can see that it's charging at 1150 watts input from the charge verter and we are outputting about 778 watts and it is estimating a recharge in 1.1 hours. Now on the screen of the EG4, you also get a voltage output reading, the current reading, and the SOC. Now you'll notice that the SOC says lost because this does not communicate with the Anker F3800. Now that's fine, it doesn't need to communicate. For the voltage output, we're seeing 51.9 to 52 volts, and the current is 22 amps. Now, if you remember, there are two charging ports on the F3800. Now, unfortunately, they don't support a parallel connection between a single charging source. For example, if I connect this in, it is going to shut off the charging completely because both of them come from the same charging source. For example, with both connected, we are now charging at zero watts, so it stops charging completely when there is a common ground between both charging ports. Now, if I unplug one of those, it should start charging here in a couple seconds. Now I am in communications with Anker's support team and I'm curious if they can make a setting change here. They've upgraded the firmware on this to have a couple improvements and if they're able to make this support parallel charging, it would be really cool. You'd be able to charge this at the full 2400 watts from the charge verter if we had both of these ports connected up. Now I did have to change a few of the settings on the charge verter in order to get the full charging speed on the F3800. So take a look at these settings. You'll want to mimic these if you want to charge at the full speed. Now guys, I apologize for the fan noise. This has really loud fans because it's such a heavy duty charger. This is able to output 100 amps, slightly over 5,000 watts of power to charge up a 48 volt battery bank. And luckily it's also compatible with the Anker F3800. Now I have a few viewers that probably have two of these 
And they're probably wondering, well, can I connect the EG4 charge verter up to two separate Anker F3800s to dual charge them? Now, I believe that would be possible if you had two pigtails because the Anker F3800s charge independently from each other. So if you connected one pigtail up to each one, you should be able to charge at around 1150 watts on each unit or around 2400 watts total. Now, I don't have a way to test that because I only have one of these units, but if someone else has two units and they pick up a charge verter and test that out, let me know if you can charge two separate units at the same time using one charge verter. So the big question is, do I have to purchase the EG4 charge verter to accomplish the same thing? And let me explain why this is a better option than others out there. First off is the actual cost. In order to put out a continuous 1200 watts into this power station, you are going to need a very large AC to DC converter that can handle that power continuously. For example, right here, I have a 1200 watt BK Precision uh, AC to DC power supply. This costs over $3,000 new, and that is basically more money than the actual uh, power station itself. If you want to have high amperage and high voltage continuously, you will have to purchase a very large AC to DC power supply and they stack up quick. If you get a cheaper model, it won't be able to handle the continuous output and will probably burn up within a few hours and then you're gonna be out your money. So you're gonna to have to purchase something that's large and can handle the output. The charge verter, for example, is rated at 5,000 watts and us charging one unit at 1200 watts is not anywhere near the maximum output and this is able to keep itself cool. Even if you're charging two units at 2400 watts, you're still only running this at 50% of its rated power output, so it should be just fine. The other thing to consider is, most of the time you're gonna be charging from AC input is if you have a power outage and you're charging from a gas generator. A AC to DC converter like this will not be able to run off the dirty power from a gas generator, but the charge verter is designed to run off any sort of gas generator, an inverter generator or a traditional sine wave generator. This is designed to take any of that dirty power and convert it to DC power. That's kind of why this thing was created. So this is not nearly the cost of something like this, yet it has more functionality. So let's go ahead and test that out. I wanna take this outside, power it up with my gas generator and see if we can actually charge the F3800. Okay guys, so here is the testing setup for running the charge verter off a gas generator to charge up the F3800. So right here I have the generator. This is actually a dual fuel generator from Pulsar. It's their GX400BN. This is a 4,000 watt peak dual fuel generator and I'll be running it off propane today. The benefit of having this generator here is that it does have an RV 30 amp output and that's how I'll be connecting up the charge verter. Now for the charge verter setup, I will go over this wiring a little bit later in the video to show you how I did this. But basically, I have the 240 volt cable that comes with the charge verter and I've adapted it to the 30 amp output. So I'll show you how that works to run it off 120 volts. I have the DC output going out and around the back of the power station where I have two XT60s. And of course, we'll only be connecting one into the solar charging port to charge it at around 1150 watts. So first, I'm going to start at the generator, get it warm, and then we'll plug in the charge verter. Okay guys, it's gonna be really hard to see the screen, but we are sitting at 95% state of charge and 1150 watts. I'll throw a screenshot up from the app so you guys can see what's happening, but we have this connected in and it is charging from the gas generator. Okay, so everything appears to be working properly when running the charge verter off the propane generator. So I'm gonna let this finish up charging. It's probably got about 10 to 15 minutes. Just wanna make sure everything works without any issues. And the only thing you'd have to do is adjust the cable length, depending on where you have your generator and where you have your power station. But once this is finished, I'll take you inside to show you guys the wiring setup. It is fairly simple. You just buy a few things off Amazon and you can connect everything together. 
Now in the next section of the video, I wanna talk about powering up the EG4 charge verter. If you remember, it accepts two different voltages, 240 volt and 120 volt. Now out of the box, you get this power cable. This is meant for 240 volts input. So if you have a 240 volt generator, you don't have to worry about any modifications. This is an L1430 plug, and you should be familiar with this if you have a 240 volt source. If not, that's fine. This will still work off 120 volts. I'll walk through this adapter here that I've built, and I'll link these products down in the video description. Now, if you wanna power this off 120 volts, you'll connect up the 240 volt charging cable, and you'll notice that this has four conductors. So you have your ground, you have two hots, which each provide 120 volts, and then you have this one up here, which is your neutral. Now they do provide the wiring diagram in the user manual, and that's how I set this up. So right here, we have an L1430 receptacle with three conductors. You have your neutral, you have your hot or your live, and then you have your ground. And this connects right up to this adapter here. Now, what this is, is this is a dog bone style adapter. I purchased this for an RV connection. Basically, I chopped off the end, stripped back the insulation, and then attached on this receptacle so I could be able to attach it properly to this. I could not find any type of adapter that was wired in this sort of way online, so you have to make your own cable. Now, I'll quickly take this apart so you guys can see how it's put together. Um, these just come apart pretty easily with a couple screws and then you can rewire them up. So uh, fairly easy. If you've ever wired an outlet, uh, you can definitely do something like this. Now, once you remove those two screws, this and this just kind of slide down on top of this cable, and then it reveals the three conductors. So right here, you can see the white one is your neutral, the black is your hot, and the green is your ground. Basically, you just strip back the wire, put it up into this slot and then screw down this screw extremely tight and you have wired up your DIY 120 volt power cable for the charge verter. So with those changes, now we can power it off 120 volts or 240 volts. So let's focus on the output wiring. Right here we have the stock cabling. This is your positive wire, this red one, and the black one is your negative wire. And this is meant to charge a battery. If you look right here, we have ring terminals which these aren't compatible with F3800, so we have to make a change. But I still wanna make this compatible with a battery just in case I wanna charge a battery down the road. So what I wanna do is put an inline adapter. I'm going to use these SB50 connections with these six gauge terminals. We are gonna cut off about a foot of this wire and we are gonna put a break in it using SB50s so we can change the end off so it's compatible with a battery or the F3800. Okay guys, there's no going back. I have cut the wire. So now this is what the setup looks like. We are gonna put an SB50 right here and another SB50 right here. So we can basically attach this one when we wanna to connect to a battery. And then we'll have another adapter that we can make it so it's compatible with the F3800. This is really easy to put these on. Basically, you just cut back the insulation, put on the terminal, and then you crimp it down with these crimpers and you're good to go. So jumping forward a few minutes, I have one side completed. They're all snapped in there. Everything's good to go there and I have these two ready to go. Now these have already been crimped, so you can see the crimp marks on there. Now when you feed these in, you do have to do it a particular way. So you can see it's labeled positive and negative, and there is a spring clip in here. You can see that spring right there, and this bent part of the pin goes over this spring. So let me get this lined up. So we have the positive and the spring clip, and it basically is just gonna go on you kind of feed it in, snap it into place. You can see it snaps over that spring. Do the same thing with the negative, line it up, push it in. Sometimes it takes a little bit and they are both snapped in. And then these can now connect together and they are a very secure connection. Well, now that I have this completed, I'd make one recommendation. You can see that these are pretty short. If you wanted to connect up to a server rack battery, this is probably not going to reach between the two terminals. So I would definitely recommend making these longer in your setup. Um, I already have a long set of these, so I wanted a short one. So that's why I made these shorter, but definitely make these longer if you're looking to connect up to a 48 volt battery 
in the future with the charge verter. Now, what is this right here? Well, this is how we're going to connect up to the F3800. So this is the same SV50 connection, except for inside this, I'm using eight gauge terminals. They have different size terminals available, and I wanted to use eight gauge because right here, I actually have two 10 gauge wire sets going into each one. So they feed in there perfectly. I basically just stripped back the insulation, crimped those on, and then snapped it in. Now, what these are is these are XT90 anti-spark connections. These allow you to connect up to a high voltage, um, high power setup without getting a spark because these have a built-in resistor. Now, the final adapter that you'll need to connect up to the F3800 is this one right here. Now, this is a 10 gauge wire. It's XT90 male to XT60 female. Now don't worry, I'll have all the product links down in the video description so there's no confusion, so you can just purchase these. But basically what you'll wanna do is you connect this to your power station DC charging port first, and then you would connect this up right here. And because there's an XT90 anti-spark, you will not get a spark. Now if you happen to have a second F3800, you can use this second pigtail to charge that one up. You do the same thing, connect it up to the second F3800 charging port, and then connect this up right here, and then it will start charging both devices. Now in the future, if they happen to enable parallel charging where you can connect these up to the same power station, you have the ability to connect both up for faster charging. Remember, all these will be down in the video description. Now guys, before ending the video, I quickly wanna talk about a new firmware update that upgraded the solar charge controllers on the F3800 so you can get much more power. Now up on the screen, you're gonna see both the old and the new solar parameters. Just make sure you've upgraded the firmware on the unit to version 2.11 or newer so you can get the new changes. The biggest change is the voltage input. For example, now you can get peak amperage anywhere between 15 and 60 volts. And they've upped the amperage a little bit to 27 amps. This will allow you to use basically any 300 watt class or 400 watt class solar panel together in parallel to get the 1200 watts. Now, if you still need a little bit of extra guidance on how to connect those solar panels together in parallel or what other components may be needed to keep everything safe, feel free to reach out to me via my Ask Me Consulting service. I'd be happy to help. Now, hopefully you guys have found the information in this video helpful, especially if you're wanting to work around the 240 volt shutoff on the F3800. Now, another way to get around this is by just using 48 volt batteries and charging the unit. And then you can use any sort of charger on your 48 volt battery. But that does take uh, additional cost to purchase a 48 volt battery. I have a full video on that that I'll include down in the video description that kind of goes through some of the quirks and how to get around them. But in this video, you can see that the EG4 charge verter is a somewhat affordable way to overcome the AC charging issue. You guys will have to let me know if you have any other questions about this, throw a comment down below. And if you want some extra guidance about this, I will have the link to my Ask Me Consulting service down in the video description as well, where you can get in direct contact with me and I can walk you through any wiring setups or any other complications that you may have because I'd love to help you get this working because some people ended up purchasing these units without even knowing the 240 volt shuts off. And so now they're in a bind, say, you know, basically how do I get this to work? Well, this is one way to do that. Make sure you check out the video description. I'll have all the links down there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please smash the thumbs up button. I'll recommend a few other videos that you guys can check out. I appreciate you guys' support on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.